Welcome to Mashable Connect. Everyone enjoying their dinner? Yeah. Sounds like it. Good. Uh, again, we're excited, thrilled to have you guys here. I'm Adam Ostro, our editor in chief. Yeah. Thanks, Lewis. <laughs> and uh, it's my pleasure tonight to introduce our keynote speaker. Uh, just a few words before we bring him out. Uh, you know, I've been working with Pete for a little over four years now. In that time, he's gained a lot of hair, and I've lost most of mine. <laughs> But in any event, we've come a long way, and it's hard to believe we're where we are tonight, kicking off a three-day conference with an incredible lineup of speakers and attendees to represent some of the most exciting companies in the space, some of the biggest brands in the world, and some of the technologies that will be shaping our world and Mashable's coverage in the years to come. You know, back in 2007, Pete was a one-man band, running the site and the business from a bedroom in Scotland. Similarly, I was working on my own social networking startup from a bedroom in Virginia. And like some of you in this room, I got started out contributing to Mashable just as a way to raise awareness for my project. But soon into that experience, I developed a passion for writing about the evolving world of digital. And working with Pete, I soon realized there was a vision that was much broader than a blog and an opportunity to create something truly special. Then when Pete said he'd actually pay me for writing for Mashable, I was hooked. I'll let Pete tell you a little bit more about our story and why we're all here momentarily, but a few more quick things about his recent accomplishments before we get started. Pete was recently named a 2011 Young Global Leader at the World Economic Forum. He was also one of AdAge's 2011 influencers, a Forbes Web 25 celeb, and fittingly the Telegraph's Briton of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, Mashable's founder and CEO, Pete Cashmore. Here for Mickey. Thanks, Mickey, for hosting us. And uh, it's going to be a fantastic conference, and thanks to Disney as well. Good to cheer for Mickey again. <laughs> do, you, do you want to stay here and help me out? <laughs> So thanks everyone for coming, and again, thanks Disney for hosting us. Um, and welcome to Mashable Connect, uh, our first three-day conference. This is a conference all about connection. It's about how the world is becoming more connected through the web, through social networking, and increasingly through mobile devices. And it's about how these connections are reshaping our lives and our work. And boy, you guys are connected bunch. We actually uh, use the social influence tool Clout to measure the true reach of the people in this room. That's the number of actual people who engage with you, retweet you, reply to you. And we found that 25% of you in this room influence more than 1,000 real people. And 5% of you influence more than 10,000 people when you tweet. Um, so it's a pretty incredible group we've got here and really the social influencers who are leading this charge. Um, you're also highly influential in your work. 41% uh, of the people in this room are directors, SVPs, VPs, and heads of your department. Um, it's a very select group. We actually hand-selected everybody who's here. 25% um, of you are CEOs, founders, and presidents of your companies. 14% uh, of you define the social media strategy for the organizations you represent. And 11% of you are managers at your organization. So very, very uh, proud and honored and humbled to have you all here. Um, so, uh, uh, y and you guys are, are ahead of the curve as well. 100% uh, of the people in this room have smartphones. Uh, <laughs> 11% of you are on Android devices. Anyone on Android? There you go. That's the 11%. 17% uh, of you are on Blackberries, Blackberry people. And here's the big one. 
70% of people in this room have an iPhone. iPhone people, yeah. <laughs> nice. And I'd encourage you to use those devices. Mashable Connect is, is a conference where tweeting and blogging and Facebooking and photo sharing and checking in is very much encouraged. Um, and we think online ne networking is just a fantastic complement to the real world connections that you're making. Um, so we hope that, that that online sharing will help bring this conference to a wider group, and we really encourage you to do that. It really helps the people who maybe couldn't be here but still want to share in some of the insights. Um, <laughs> this thing's unnerving. There's like jokes behind me. <laughs> I'm getting proposed to on the screen there. So. Someone was saying that the, the, the playlist was, was, was written before I was born. Uh, okay, so... I do want to tell you a little bit about the history of Mashable, though, and how, how we got here. Um, Mashable has always been about connecting people. I started the site when I was 19, and living in Aberdeenshire in Scotland, a little town called Bankery. Um, and at that time, people on the web we're joining social networks in record numbers. It was suddenly taking off. I mean, Facebook was still a closed college network, but there were, there were other networks that were springing up. And I, I really saw a kind of a revolution taking place in the digital space. Um, and I wanted to be, to be part of that. It, it seemed like a huge opportunity. And when you're living in a, in a small town, uh, something big that can make a global impact is incredibly exciting. So this was in mid-2005, living in a little town in, in Scotland. Didn't really know anyone in tech. Didn't know how to run a business. Um, I just finished high school at 19 because I'd been out for like two years sick. So I was really behind. All my friends had gone to university. And I was like, what am I going to do with my life? Um, but I had a computer and an internet connection. And it turns out these days that's really all you need. Um, so lacking the knowledge and, and connections to get a job in, in that space that I found really exciting, which is web technology, uh, I started writing about it. And I set up a WordPress blog, and, and I just shared what I learned about what was happening on the web. You know, new web startups, I was covering MySpace. I covered YouTube had just launched, and that seemed like a fun little site that might go somewhere, and it did. Um, but I had no intention to, to start a business. I, I just wanted to get into that space, wanted a job, and obviously no one was going to give me that opportunity if I couldn't really prove myself. But then people started to comment on the site, and they started emailing me tips, and they posted responses on their own blogs. Um, and they really created a conversation that went beyond what I'd been posting. Um, so Mashable was becoming not just a news source, but, but a community. And now that community consists of nearly 13 million visitors a month. Um, and we've continued to grow because our audience is very unique. It's an audience of people who are influencers, who share, who have these thousands or tens of thousands of people that they influence. And whenever they share a Mashable story or discuss one, they're really bringing in those, those new communities who, who continue to read Mashable. Um, and this is a central trend in the revolution that, that we're experiencing, that we're all part of. Social media puts the tools of content creation and distribution into everybody's hands. No longer do people want to be broadcast to. Am I going to take a break? <laughs> nice. Can we, can we start the bidding? And, and this is really the central trend, is that people are becoming creators and distributors of content. Um, and they, they want to engage in conversations. And they want to curate the news for these vast networks of friends. Um, on YouTube, everyone has a TV channel. On Twitter, everyone's an editor or like a commenter. Um, and with an iPhone in your pocket, you can be a photojournalist or a videographer. It's, it's really empowering. Um, maybe too empowering sometimes. <laughs> Four euros? What? Um, so, uh, you know, at its, at its core, social media is really a democratizing force. And, and it really does empower individuals with these tools of, of connection and content creation. And in, in some cases, social media is literally spreading democracy. 
um, in Egypt and elsewhere in the Middle East, these tools are creating revolutions in, in the truest sense. You know, we use this word revolution uh, sometimes haphazardly, but you know, in the Middle East, we're really seeing revolutions and, and dictators falling because of social media enabling people to do what they want to do. Um, uh, and this is really the power of social connection. You provide these tools to people, you provide connections, and these, these wonderful things happen. And this is very much Mashable's mission, to empower people by spreading knowledge and creating understanding of, of these new social tools. Uh, I mean, thanks to an internet connection, a WordPress blog, I was empowered to reach millions of people. Um, and now we, we look to provide the same opportunities to people around the world. So when you're pondering our theme, the, the power of connections, uh, I'd implore you to, to consider the wider context. And, and social media is really about empowerment, about taking the, the tools of the few and putting them into the hands of the many, um, including you guys. And, <laughs> and what I would say is, is if, you know, if you're in media, we're no longer the audience. Or if you're in marketing, which many of you are, we're no longer consumers. Uh, we don't want to just consume, we want to create, we want to engage. Um, and don't just talk to us, talk with us, have, have a conversation. And those are the, the demands of our connected generation to be part of something. So if these new tools are so powerful, why wouldn't we do all our online network? Why wouldn't we do all our networking online? Why would we come here and host a conference at Disney World and not just have it on the web, not just have it on Twitter or Facebook? Um, and I think what's really valuable about connection, do we want to take a break for you guys to just like tweet? Um, you know, I think the power of these connections really came to me after we started doing events for Mashable. Um, the online world's obviously where I forge a lot of my connections, and the web was really my only link to tech for years. I didn't live in the US, and I was miles away from anywhere, but um, after you know, two years of school and growing up in a rural community in Scotland, I started, um, you know, I wasn't particularly social, and you know, over the years, I've learned the value of face-to-face -face networking and the depth of those connections and the cascade of ideas that can happen when you start speaking with people in real life. So for the first two and a half years of Mashable, I didn't meet anyone who worked for Mashable. I would just hire them over email, wouldn't even see them. Um, <laughs> and everyone worked from home, and they were all around the world. You know, I hired Stan in Croatia, and Adam was in New York, and um, you know, I was in Scotland, and we didn't meet for, for a long, long time. And I was convinced that actually connecting online was faster and more efficient, and um, I was very comfortable with it. And being a kind of an introvert, I thought that you know, I didn't want to travel and miss the breaking news story, and I, you know, I felt comfortable with those online connections. So you know, I, I really came to experience offline networking uh, a couple years later. Um, I got an email from a guy in New York, and he'd listed a bunch of ideas for what he wanted to do with Mashable. He was, he was, you know, I was getting hundreds of emails a day, so I just did what I did with all my email at that point, which was just to ignore it. Um, and then he emailed me again a few days later with, with a list of ideas for what Mashable should do, and he was in real estate, and he wanted to get out of real estate. And, you know, I was busy trying to write eight to ten articles on a day. It was, it was you know, just me and a couple other people trying to cover everything that was going on. Um, and I was trying to sell ads on the site, so I didn't get back to him. And then he kept sending me emails. He was kept sending me all these proposals for initiatives we should do. And he sent me, you know, five, six, seven emails. And uh, I, uh, he said, well, I want to help out. And, you know, I said I didn't have any money. And he said, well, it didn't matter. He wanted to join. He wanted to, to get a real estate. So I gave him and I said, okay, come on, bring your ideas on, and we'll try and, we'll try and build something. And that was Adam Hirsch. And he became our COO. Um, he was annoyingly persistent. And I think people at Mashable will agree he is still annoyingly persistent. Um, but a few months after Adam joined, he said we should start doing events to meet the Mashable community in real life. And he proposed that we hold the Open Web Awards Gala at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco. Um, 
And Mashable was a blog about web startups at the time. We wanted to you know, reward startups online. We wanted to give trophies to the best ones. He, he went on to mention that the event would cost $50,000, and we didn't have $50,000, but he said that was fine because he'd put it on his credit card already. And I said, fine, go with it. And he said he'd get sponsors and that he'd get people to buy tickets, and he did, and it was our first successful event. So, you know, in January 2008, I flew from Scotland to San Francisco for the first time, and I was suddenly surrounded with 500 or so people who really loved Mashable and wanted to talk about what we were doing, um, which was incredibly surprising and also humbling for me. Uh, but in addition to talking about web startups, they enthused about social media, and they said, you know, they were sending Mashable articles to their bosses because they wanted to get them on board with this new social trend. Uh, and I came away from that event knowing that it was these people, the, the social influencers, at the center of this social media revolution uh, for whom I needed to write. So rather than covering web startups, we refocused the site on the social trend um, and on the tools that were empowering people to share. <laughs> Do you want me to read out some of them? <laughs> I, uh, the Bieber style, nice. So we could look at Google Analytics data all day, but we wouldn't really have learned that it was about the social media trend. It was about social networking. This was what people wanted to know, and we recalibrated the site around this wider social trend. It wasn't just about web startups anymore. It was about social, social networking. It was about community, and it was about conversations. So this was the start of our event strategy at Mashable, and we hired our events director, Karen Hartline, who Hosted, she hosted an eight-city summer tour. We did Mashable meetups. We did a gathering at South by Southwest. We hosted the Mashable Media Summit in New York. We did the Social Good Summit, which we now do annually with the UN Foundation. And we've continued the Mashable Awards. Uh, this year we did it in Las Vegas at Cirque du Soleil. Uh, and that's been an incredibly successful event for us. Uh, so we continue to believe that online connections provide breadth and, and that Real-world interactions create depth and true understanding. We're told that something like 90% of communication is nonverbal, and that's why we've all come here to connect in real life, because while we love the web, you can't learn that much if you're only hearing 10% of the conversation. So conversation and connection are the themes, and over the next few days we'll hear about some we'll hear from some of the preeminent minds in the social in the digital industry about the power of these connections we'll learn about the transformation of media its evolution from a broadcast channel to a truly social experience christy tanner the general manager and executive vice president of tv guide digital will tell us the truth about social television um, feel free to clap for them. Uh, we'll hear about what's next for social TV from the director of social media and marketing at HBO and the vice president of Bravo, the executive vice president of Bravo Digital Media. Um, we'll hear from Greg Clayman, the publisher of The Daily, the iPad app, and he'll tell us how the iPad is creating new experiences for consuming news. And we'll hear from Casey Estenson, who's the Senior Vice President and General Manager at CNN Digital. And he'll tell us how major news organizations like his are adapting to this media revolution. Of course, our connected society is also changing our relationship with brands, making our companies and organizations more transparent, more accessible, more human. Um, and I know a lot of you work in the marketing industry, and I'll be looking forward to a lot of this content. Uh, David Jones, the CEO of Havas, will explain why authenticity, transparency, and speed are key to a brand's success. Rohit Bhargava, the SVP of Global Strategy and Marketing at Ogilvy, will describe how brands can survive the believability crisis. Steve Rubel, the SVP of Digital Insights at Edelman Digital, will tell us how brands and individuals can maintain authority in the age of overload. Dave Knox, the Chief Marketing Officer at Rockfish, 
will implore us to consider how brands and startups can work together to create mutually beneficial yet innovative partnerships. And Josh Copel, whose company Scroll Motion brought us the Esquire magazine on the iPad, will show us how to preserve the art and culture of print on these new digital devices. But the impact of our socially connected and digital world reaches far beyond media and marketing. We'll learn too how this movement is enabling creativity, commerce, and the enterprise. We'll learn how online and offline networking interact. We'll explore the future of location-based services, and we'll consider the power of online identity. So while the presentations and, and panels will begin our conversation, we think they're really just that, they're the beginning. So we've scheduled in copious opportunities to network and continue the conversation. And what better place to do that than at Walt Disney World, the happiest place on earth? <laughs> TM. Um, and we chose Walt Disney World because it does offer a getaway from the daily distractions um, and brings us into a fun, novel environment. Everyone's a guest here. Um, and we thought that would be fantastic for creating connections. <laughs> so being at Walt Disney World, we have a lot of memorable events planned. On Friday night, we'll have cocktails, desserts, and a fireworks show at Epcot. Uh, then we'll enjoy special access to the park while it's closed to regular ticket holders. So we'll be having a fun time tomorrow night at Epcot, uh, right up until midnight. Uh, on Saturday afternoon, we'll get to experience the Magic Kingdom in a whole new way, thanks to Goala. You'll earn rewards for checking in and completing activities around the park. And we'll get a chance to network in a whole new way at a theme park. Uh, so that's going to be fun. One of the things that's really great about Mashable's readership as well is that they love to socialize. And we're excited to see that some of you have set up your own activities during the conference. We have a social network called Pathable. Um, and people have been setting up all kinds of things, self-organized events uh, on that social network. Some of you are planning a day at the park on Sunday after the conference. So check out if you want to go to the park on Sunday. Check out Pathable. And some of you have signed up to go jogging together at 6.30 AM tomorrow. <laughs> Who is responsible for that? That was you? OK. It was Brian. Um, I have no plans to join you guys. I'm going to be having, I'm going to be having a Mickey Mouse shaped waffle. I think with like some syrup that morning. Um, but these are the themes that I'd like you to consider during Mashable Connect: is how is our connected society changing the nature of media? How is it changing brands, business, and commerce? And why do these real-world connections continue to matter? But I'd also like you to think even bigger about how it's changing us as a society. I don't think that this desire for connection is a new one. I mean, what, what did we do before mass media? What did we do before we have mass marketing? What was it like before television and newspapers and radio and all these broadcast channels that we have now, before the multi-million dollar Super Bowl ads? Um, well, you know what we did before all that? We talked to each other. And we didn't rely on TV ads to tell us what to buy. We asked our friends. We, for news, we relied on information shared by our communities, by people in the local area. So perhaps social media is returning us to a more natural state. Perhaps this whole uh, broadcast era has somewhat been an anomaly. And, and now we get a chance to communicate, as we always have, one on one. So, what I'd really like you to consider in the bigger picture is, is what is the lasting legacy of this digital revolution and all these new connections that we're forming. Agriculture freed us from the requirement to produce our own food, which made us a lot more productive. The Industrial Revolution moved the requirement to produce all our goods uh, by hand and freed us up to be more productive. And in the digital age, how, how will this age be viewed when People look back in 100 years even, or 200 years, beyond what's happening in media, but on what's, what's happening in marketing, what's happening in society, and what's happening in our culture. Clearly, this will be perceived as an age in which the efficient spread of information, good ideas, new solutions to problems, 
will be seen to have dramatically increased, will seem to have increased the pace of innovation. Uh, new ideas don't come from out of the ether, they come when two or more existing ideas are combined. And in this era, in the digital era, that uh, creation of new ideas has exponentially increased. We're having more interactions and new concepts are forming at an unprecedented space. We're really at a revolutionary time. And uh, yes, this will be remembered as, as, a res as a revolution in media. Uh, during which you know, social tools empowered people to create and curate content. Uh, and yes, it was the era in which the audience became the community and started to join in on the conversation, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. Um, but that's what we have. And yes, it will be remembered as a revolution in business and marketing and commerce. And it will be the era in which the consumer became the creator and curator, I wanted to be a participant in the process, I wanted to join in the conversation. But most of all, I think this will be remembered as an era in which individuals became more connected than ever before. And it's these connections, I think, when we look back, that, that will have created a blossoming of innovation that we've never seen before. So this is the power of social connection, revolutionizing media, revolutionizing marketing, but most of all, changing who we are, creating new connections that actually have changed the world and are creating revolutions around the world. And while we might talk about these small things, Twitter and Facebook, I really want you to think about the bigger picture and the era that we're living in is an incredibly exciting one. And you guys, as some of the most influential people in this era, are shaping the, the future of our species. It's not, it's not overstating the fact. So I really want you to consider your role in that and to consider how we're shaping the bigger picture. And with that, I welcome you to Mashable Connect. I thank you for your additional jokes and commentary. And I hope you have a fantastic time during the conference. Thanks for Disney for hosting us. Thanks for all the speakers. And, uh, I'm very much looking forward to having a conversation with all of you. Thanks, guys.